Hey Audacious Church, welcome to Audacious Devotionals. Hope you're having a great morning, a great afternoon, great evening whenever you're watching this. So my name is Nav and I'm part of the North Location team and I'm privileged and I'm honoured to be sharing today's devotional with you. Um, I hope you've got your Bibles, your pens, your journals, um, along with your choice of beverage. Um, and my uh, choice of beverage is a coffee, so I'm gonna I'm starting the day off with a coffee. Um, but before we get going, I've just got this one question for you that's been niggling me for a while. Have you ever had certain expectations of something or from someone and they've not delivered? Have you ever had certain expectations of something or from someone and they've not delivered? It happened to me um, during first lockdown when all the gyms were closed and I was like, I need to order some sort of equipment to train with. So I decided to order some resistant bands and it took a while for them to arrive because everyone everywhere were ordering resistant bands. And anyway, when they did finally arrive, first of all, they weren't what I expected. They looked a lot thinner than the ones that I ordered. And secondly, when I went to do my workout with them, about four of them broke straight away, which meant I couldn't do any other workouts with resistant bands after that. And I'm sure you've been there where you, where you may have been to a restaurant and you've ordered some food and it wasn't what you expected when it arrived, or you've ordered some clothes offline and you've tried them on and it just wasn't, it just wasn't the right size or it just, it just wasn't what you expected. Or maybe, you've you've done some online dating and 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 you met someone online and when you see them in person it's like this was not what i ordered and um, so in the bible there's two characters abraham and sarah who went through a similar thing and god gave him a promise and god gave him a promise god gave abraham a promise at the age of 75 that he was going to have descendants he was a hundred years old and Sarah was 90 years old when Isaac, the promised child, was actually born. So it took, so it took over, it took 25 years for the promise to come to pass. But something happened whilst they were waiting. Abraham and Sarah decided to facilitate the keeping of God's promise and they decided to take the matter into their own hands. So the key text that I want to look at today is Genesis 16 verse 1 to 2. So let's have a read of this. And it says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she had so she said to Abraham, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abraham agreed to what Sarai said. So I just want to set the scene here. So Sarai speaking to Abram, who was later Abraham, and she was later Sarah. And so she's like, hey, babe, I know that you've had this promise from God, right? Um, and that we're going to have descendants and all that and, and what have you. But I'm old and you're like really old and you know, maybe we need to help God, for, you know, maybe we need to help facilitate this and help God with, um, uh, with, with these promises so they can come to pass. Um, and I know it doesn't say in the Bible at all, but, you know, God helps those who help themselves kind of thing. Um, and I was just thinking that why don't you, um, you know, why don't you sleep with my bestie over there, H? And, and and maybe, you know, maybe we can have a family through her. Um, and, and, and yeah, and then, and then Abraham turned around and said, all right, let, let's do that. Uh, so today's devotional is entitled, When God's Promise Does Not Look Like We Expected. When God's Promise Does Not Look Like We Expected. So when we look at this text right in front of us, there's three things that I'm getting from this text first that the first thing that, that I've noticed is that they didn't pray about it Sarai brought this scenario to Abram and but they didn't 
pray about it. Secondly, they decided to facilitate and take control of God's promise. And thirdly, they made it happen. So they decided to make it happen out of their own strength. So let's read on to see the outcome of what happened, what happens when we, when we decide to create something of our own strength. So in verse four, it says, Abraham slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she, when she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, you are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my slave in your arms and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. And Abraham's, Abram's like, well, I'm kind of hands off here. You deal with it. Um, so Abram says, your slave is in your hands. Do with her whatever you, whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated her, Hagar and so she fled from her. So Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. So I just got a couple of points that I just want to make about us creating our own um, dreams around God's promises. When God gives us a promise, um, I mean, I don't know about you, but I definitely have struggled with this, um, especially coming into 2021, about creating my own um, desires, my own dreams around God's promises. And so my first point is, are we adding to God's promises? Are we creating dreams around his promises that are not from him? Are we creating dreams that are not from him around his promises? And even, I mean, I, I speak to many people about, especially single people who talk about, um, and I've done it myself many a time. It's only recently I've decided that this doesn't actually make sense when we talk about types especially for single people. It's like God didn't create us to fit into types. First of all, God didn't create us to fit into types. So we may have thoughts about, you know, what the person we marry, what we want them to look like, or the thing we want, what how we want that to look, or, or, or we're creating a certain expectation around it. But when it comes to types, God didn't actually create us to fit into types. He created us as individ individuals with a purpose and no one else is like you or me. So he created us to be individuals. So there is nobody else that is like you or like me. We are created in God's image. So God didn't create these types of, of uh, you know, this, these, I, you know, I go for this sort of type or I go for that sort of type of person. Um, but God created us as individuals. My second point is look to the promiser and not to the promise. So look to the promiser and not to the promise. Because promises can become idols. Promises can become idols. The promise can only deliver what is promised. So when we think about a promise, a promise can only deliver what is promised, but the promiser is where promises come from. The promiser is where the abundance comes from, and the promise can only deliver what is promised. Thirdly, the point I want to make is, but even if he doesn't, but even if he doesn't. So if you go to Daniel chapter 3, verse 17, 17 to 18, and it says, so the backdrop on this is Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. So Nebuchadnezzar, because they didn't bow down to Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's statue, um, Nebuchadnezzar was like, I'm going to throw you into this furnace. I'm going to heat it up seven times more. And, uh, and this is what they said in reply to Nebuchadnezzar. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But I love what they say next. They say, but even if he doesn't. I think that's so powerful. And I think that is literally what I believe is the basis or is what the Christian life is actually about. That even if this doesn't happen, I am still good. 
that I am still looked after, that I'm, I still have life and I still have life abundantly, even though the things that we dream of don't happen, we still have salvation and, and there's no better gift, there's no higher gift than the salvation of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. And after being saved, something that I always think about, that after being saved, we probably should have all just been raptured. But the reason that the, the reason that we are still here is for other people, that we are here for others to populate heaven, to tell people about the kingdom and to build God's kingdom. That's why we're still here. And my fourth point is that God is faithful. God is faithful. In Genesis 21 verse 1 to 3, it says, now the Lord, and it's, this is about Sarah and Abraham. So this is when God fulfills the promise. And he says, now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said. And the Lord said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham and in his old age. At the very time, God had promised him. So Sarah bore Abraham a son at the very time God has God had promised him and Abraham named him Isaac. The point I want to make today is that let's not create dreams and let's not take thing in, things into our own hands. Let's not create an Ishmael, but wait for the Isaac. Psalm 37 verse 25 says, I was young and now I'm old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging, begging for bread. Lamentations 3 verse 22 to 23 says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Our God is a faithful God. So I just want to finish off with just giving you some encouragement, just saying that if you are waiting for God's promise or God's promises right now, know that God will deliver because he's a promise keeper. Let's keep our eyes fixed and focused upon him. And I just want to finish off with this one verse from Joshua 21 verse 45. And I just want to speak this into your lives of, of everyone that's watching right now, because I feel that this is a word for someone who's watching right now. And it says, not one of all the Lord's good promises, not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. So not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed, but every one was fulfilled. And I just want to speak that over you today, church, that God is a promise keeper and know that he will deliver on all of his promises. And I believe he will deliver and just keep growing and keep learning in, in the waiting because God is always changing us. There's always something to learn in the waiting. It's been my privilege and honor to be sharing with you today, uh, today's devotional, and I'm just glad to have this time with you. I thank you for, for, for being here with me, and I look forward to seeing you guys again. Have a blessed and wonderful day. I love you all. Take care. Bye.